About 10 years ago, soybean farmers in Michigan realized that something was really bugging them. Well now, thanks to researchers at Michigan State University and with the help of soybean checkoff dollars, there's a new Spartan strength in town to take care of those pesky little critters. There's a very small, soft body sucking insect that's been wreaking havoc on soybeans for quite some time, and it's called an aphid. It pokes the plant with a needle-like mouth and feeds off the sap, and the level of damage depends on their number. Most aphids have a very complicated life cycle in which during the, the crop season, they are all female, and the females give live birth to more females. So it's sort of uh, in, uh, all, all uh, girls out there. The plant has uh, a good uh, source of water, a good root system. It can replace that liquid, but as the number of aphids increases, it's harder and harder for that plant to replace that liquid. Uh, there's changes in the, in the leaf tissue, and the aphids uh, secrete honeydew out their back end, kind of a sweet substance. They get plenty of sugar uh, in their diet, but they keep sucking because they need nitrogen. So they push the sugar out their back end, and that uh, makes the plant very sticky. And then there's a black sooty mold that grows on that that's kind of ugly. So you see this not only on crop plants, but on horticultural plants around your home. If there's enough of the sooty mold, it can reduce photosynthesis because it's almost like putting a cover on, on, the, on the plant. For most every plant out there, there's an aphid, but it's the soybean aphid that Michigan growers decided enough was enough. They knew they could use spray as a control, but that option is costly and often kills beneficial insects. So they chose to start with the plant. The Michigan Soybean Promotion Committee, which is the Soybean Checkoff Program, said, hey, we need host plant resistance. How can we get plants that are resistant to soybean aphid? We then approached Michigan State University and Dr. Wong, uh, who actually, uh, because of his nationality, had an opportunity to review this maybe a little differently than some other uh, professors at different universities. He then came with a proposal to our checkoff board or Soybean Promotion Committee and said, hey, let's fund this. He wanted to look for host plant resistance. We knew this was going to be a long process. He started this in 2002. By 2005, he actually found some material that uh, looked to be resistant. Uh, we then, as a soybean promotion committee, said, well, that's great. Is there a way we can protect this? We've got quite an investment here. Uh, went to the Intellectual Property Office of Michigan State, and they were interested in protecting it. And they said, yes, this could fall under something called a methods patent. It was patented. Uh, we then had the opportunity, because of a prior agreement made in 1993 with the uh, Michigan State University, we had the opportunity to license that. Uh, we knew that uh, we wanted three, about three facets if we were going to license this. One, we thought it was important to get this to growers as cheaply as possible because they funded the research. They funded the research for the development of germplasm. They actually funded much of the research that was developing spraying techniques. So we wanted, it, wanted to get there as cheaply as possible. We wanted to get it out as quickly as possible. We didn't want some companies to set on it for a while and think that the trite might become more valuable. The third thing is we wanted it to be out there to opportunity to every company to incorporate it into their elite germplasm, not just a singular major global company. The germplasm is known as Sparta, thanks to the research from MSU. With it available to many seed companies, it can be stacked with other traits incorporated into seed, with it already part of Roundup Ready and other pest resistances. And when seed companies pay royalties for using Sparta, they're shared with the investor, the MSU Foundation, which reinvests the money to fund further research. This material is called Sparta. You know, we comment uh, that uh, we know the Spartans in agriculture are Michigan State University, and we know Sparty is that muscular mascot. And now Sparta is soybean aphid resistant material funded by soybean producers through Michigan State University and brought to farmers across the Midwest.